So here's the kind of question we can answer now. What is the maximum error in using n equals 1 to 5 of 1 over n squared to estimate the sum of n from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared? So in other words, if I look at my sum that uh, did I, I think I put this in here. Yeah, if I look at this sum, that only goes to 5. So I'm only adding up 5 terms, right? So uh, 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 25th. And I'm going to stop right there, okay? And that equals this, 1.4636111. 1.4636. And we have a good reason to believe that that's a repeating decimal because we're adding up rational numbers. So this has to be a rational number. Sum of any two rational numbers is also rational. All right, so um, how close are we to the true sum of infinitely many terms? Well, we're now in a position to say that because we know we can, and we have terminology to say it. So we can say r sub five. That means how how far are we from getting to the infinite sum when we stop at, at with five terms is less than. And it's strictly less than, it's not less than or equal to, uh, 5 from infinity, the integral from 5 to infinity, of 1 over x squared dx. And this is one of the reasons that I've learned to do improper integrals, so I can figure out what that is. That's the limit as b approaches infinity. I'm going to go ahead and just do the antiderivative right away, because it's, you know, we've done this a bunch of times. We know that antiderivative is negative 1 over x. And we're going from 5 to b. Right? So then uh, that's going to equal the limit as b approaches infinity of, uh, so if, when I plug in the b, I'm going to get negative 1 over b. And when I plug in the 5, I'm not going to need the limit because what I, my expression will not depend on b. So I can just say it's going to be minus negative 1 fifth, so plus 1 fifth, right? Using the fundamental theorem gives me a minus sign. I already had a negative sign. So f of b minus f of a is going to give me positive 1 fifth right there. All right, and then uh, this limit, since um, uh, b is approaching infinity, the numerator is bounded, the denominator is expanding without bound. This equals 0 plus 1 fifth equals 1 fifth. So in fact, I am within 1 fifth of the actual value. Now here's a fun fact. We actually know, and by we I mean humanity as a whole, actually knows what the sum from n equals 1 uh, to infinity of 1 over n squared is exactly to infinitely many decimal places. We happen to know that one because of Leonard. No, not Leonard Cohen, Leonard Euler. Leonard Euler, uh, whom I've mentioned before, he's the reason we use E for the number 2.718, uh, 718, whatever it is. All right, that magic number E is named after Leonard. My buddy Len, Lenny, Lenny Euler. He figured out something and um, you will get to follow Euler's work on this um, at a much more advanced math class than this. After you do all your calculus, all your differential equations, you could either do, you can either find this out through Fourier analysis, or you can find it out through um, uh, analysis of uh, poles of complex functions, is how I learned it a long time ago. I can't remember it. Um, I rem but in fact, I didn't remember what the value is. I had to look it up. Which, in fact, I'm actually doing it right now. Oh, it's pi squared over 6. Who would have... What? What? That's what it is. It's pi squared over 6. Lenny proved it. All right. So is this sum really within 0.2 of pi squared over 6? Let's see. Um, so uh, what, what is uh, pi squared over 6 minus s sub 5? All right, so if I do that, here's my s sub 5 right there. All right, so I'm going to do pi squared over 6. Um, pi squared over 6 minus that number. All right, so according to uh, our theorem here, the difference, the difference between my estimate and the actual value has to be less than 0.2. It's 0.18. Yep. Now, here's the thing. If we knew exactly what the error was, then we could correct our original statement and be exactly right. But we don't. We only know a bound on the error. So this is a classic case of something called an error bound. We know the most that that error could be is 0.2. But it could be anything in between 0 and 0.2.
Now, actually, we can refine this a little bit more, but not a whole lot more. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we can. So we can approach a sum like this. And by the way, Euler found some nifty formulas like that, but there are infinitely many um, sums of infinite series that even Euler does not have a way to compute. Um, so we're going to be interested in ways to um, find those uh, those values. Let's, let's look at a couple more. What we're interested in is using finitely many terms to estimate infinitely many terms. That's what we're really talking about. We're using finitely many terms to estimate infinitely many terms. When we do that, how big of an error are we committing? We can get an upper bound on that error. So uh, we did sum n equals 1 to 1,000 of 1 over n squared. That was up here. Um, here it is right there. That's 1.643, blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, how close were we when we summed up 1,000 terms? Well, now we know how to do that. We know that the error had to be less than the integral from uh, 1,000 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. That's basically the part of the sum that we left out, or it's an upper bound for the part of the sum that we left out. Um, so that integral is going to be, and as you can see, we sort of do the same thing a bunch of times. So I'm going to have limit as b approaches infinity. The antiderivative is still negative 1 over x. You can guess what the result is going to be. Um, we're going from 1,000 to b. When I plug in the b and do the limit uh, as b approaches infinity, I'm going to get 0. And when I plug in the 1,000 and subtract a negative, I'm going to get plus uh, 1 over 1,000. So I'm going to be within 1 1,000th. One right? So now... Let's, let's look at that. Let's look at what um, our s, the true sum minus s of s sub 1,000 is. So uh, if we do that, just, just sort of checking on our formula. So if I go pi squared over 6 minus our value from up here where we estimated with 1,000 terms, Right, enter, enter, and we got 9.99 times 10 to the negative fourth. 9.99 times 10 to the negative fourth. What's that? That equals 0 .000999. Uh, I guess there's only, yeah, no, there's three nines. All right, and that is, in fact, less than 0 .001. Amazingly, it's barely less than that. But it's saying that we couldn't have had more error than that. All right, so that's the sort of idea. Um, next, we will look at, uh, you know, the real question we're going to have with these is, I have some infinite sum, I don't know what the sum is, how many terms do I need to get a specified accuracy? I mean, that's going to be the engineering application where I have some kind of a formula involving an infinite sum, I need, I have a, um, what do we call it, a tolerance, that's what engineers call it, a tolerance of 0 0.001. That means I can be off by one one thousandth of an inch and the spaceship still won't crash. Um, uh, so, uh, and I don't want to add up more terms than I need to because it takes quite a lot of time to add up finitely many terms. So I'm going to, we're going to look at a, a sum that we don't know the sum of, one over n cubed, all right? Well, how do, how do I know this even converges? Because it's a P series with P equals three. 3 is greater than 1, therefore this is a convergent p-series. But what does it converge to? How, how many terms will I need to add to get within 0 0.001? Find out next time.